you want to create an application load balancer for a Rails Nginx application? Then stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas with Brainchoice Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack web development, please consider subscribing below. I have a goal of reaching a thousand subscribers and I'll be honest, it's going to take a lot of help. If you have somebody you know who you think may be interested in this type of content and you wouldn't mind sharing, I'd really appreciate it. In this AWS Rails tutorial, we're going to walk through the entire process of setting up an application load balancer with an attached SSL certificate. We'll create a target group, register targets, and set up a health check. Finally, we'll update our Nginx and application config to force SSL. Don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process from start to finish. If your Rails application takes off, you would need to eventually scale. One option is to scale out or scale horizontally. What this means is setting up an application load balancer like we'll do in this video, and then adding many servers underneath it. This allows you to serve higher volumes of traffic. So that's what we're basically setting the groundwork to be able to do in this video tutorial. With that being said, let's get into the tutorial and start creating an application load balancer. First thing you're gonna do is log into the AWS Management Console. Application load balancers are located in the compute section under EC2. So click EC2, then scroll down in the left hand bar, and you're gonna click on load balancer. Here you can see we don't currently have any load balancers in this region. So we're gonna go ahead and click create load balancer. There are a few options here. You could choose a classic load balancer, but those are slowly being deprecated over time. That's the previous generation. Then you can see in the center, we have network load balancers for TCP, TLS, and UDP traffic. The uh, load balancer we're gonna use is the application load balancer, the first one on the left here. You can see this is for HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Go ahead and click create. We'll quickly work our way through the load balancer configuration form. First thing we need to do is provide a name. I'm gonna call mine AWS Rails ALB for application load balancer. Make sure that internet facing is checked here. We're gonna leave it on IPv4. And if you scroll down, you can see the listeners. Here we wanna accept both HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Choose HTTPS as a listener. Scrolling down, we need to add some availability zones. Here, I'm gonna select US East 1F, as I happen to know that our server is in that region. And I'll select one more. You typically wanna have at least two availability zones to increase the availability of your load balancer. Now that we've got our subnets selected, you can scroll down. If you want, you can add a global accelerator. Maybe that's something we can cover in a future tutorial if people would like. One quick point, if you're not sure which availability zone your current EC2 instance is in, you can navigate. I'm gonna control click here on EC2 so I can open up a separate tab. Then we can click on this and look at our running instance. And here you can see the availability zone is in US East 1F. So we'll close that now and go back to our form. Next, if you'd like, you could also add tags. We're gonna go ahead and skip that though and configure our security settings. Here, we're gonna wanna use HTTPS or secure traffic. So we're going to choose a certificate from AWS Certificate Manager. If you haven't created a certificate with Certificate Manager before, I have a tutorial on that that I'll link in the card as well as the description below. So in my case, I'm gonna leave this choose certificate with ACM selected, and it happens to already be on my current certificate. If we open certificate manager in a new tab, you can see this certificate supports the wildcard as well as the naked domain name. This will allow us to support www and non requests to our load balancer, as well as any future subdomain ideas that we could come up with. Let's go ahead and close that tab now and we'll continue working on our form. Here we're gonna leave the security policy as is. Next we're gonna go to configure security groups. Within the security groups setting, I'm going to copy my AWS Rails security group to a new security group and just remove SSH as that won't be necessary. We'll give our security group a name, AWS Rails ALB. And I typically put in the description the type of traffic I'm allowing even though you can see that by looking at the group itself. Next, let's go ahead and configure routing. What we're doing here is creating a target group. So traffic will come over the internet to our application load balancer. That load balancer will then pass traffic off to our target group. Next, we will register targets within the target group and the traffic will be evenly distributed between the targets. We're gonna give our new target group a name. In my case, I'm gonna call it ADBS Rails TG for target group. The target type will be instance. We're gonna leave the protocol as HTTP. In this case, our application load balancer 
will be our point of SSL termination. Next, for the health check, we're gonna have that run over HTTP as well. We're just gonna give this an endpoint of health check. Here, there are some advanced settings for the health check if you want to change them. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave mine at the defaults. When the application load balancer hands traffic off to the target group, the target group will only serve to registered and healthy targets. Healthy targets are defined as targets that respond with a 200 success code to the endpoint slash health check five consecutive times. If a target fails to respond with a 200 success code to this slash health check endpoint two times here in the unhealthy threshold, the target group will no longer serve traffic to that target. Next, let's go ahead and register some targets. In this case, we're just gonna register one target, our AWS Rails EC2 instance. So you're gonna click the checkbox next to the instance or instances that you'd like to register and then click add to register. Then you can click review. Here you have an opportunity to review all of the options we selected throughout the wizard and you can click create. Now that we've successfully created our load balancer, let's click close. Then we can check out the listeners. Here in the listeners, you have the opportunity to select your current target group to watch as targets become healthy. You can also select the target group from the left side menu directly under load balancers. So let's just click our AWS Rails TG and watch our targets. We're gonna click on the targets tab. Here you can see the target registration is still in process. Once registration is complete, it will begin hitting our target at the slash health check endpoint and seeing if it gets a 200 response. Because we're not doing anything within our application or on our server to account for this new endpoint, we'll never get a healthy instance. So let's go handle that now. I'm gonna switch over to the terminal. We're going to use SSH config to log into our instance. If you've never used SSH config before, I've got a tutorial about how to create an SSH config file that I'll link in the card as well as the description below. In this case, since we have SSH config set up, I'll just SSH into AWS Rails. Next, we will CD into our Nginx config. My current Nginx configuration and this deployment follows my tutorial on how to create your first Rails app and deploy it to an EC2 instance. I'll link this Capistrano tutorial in the card as well as the description below if you need help there. Next, we'll clear the screen and we will update our configuration file, sudo nano aws-rails.com. And we'll paste in our password. Here you can see the server block in our Nginx config file. We'll add a new block just below our passenger configuration for our new health check endpoint. So we'll paste in our new health check code and walk through it. Here, we're gonna grab any request to slash health check to turn the access logs off and we're gonna return a 200 response code with the header of content type text slash plane. This will handle these health checks from our application load balancer at the Nginx level. So we never have to load our application, which would be much slower. We can hit control X to break out of this and save. Just to make sure all of our changes take effect, let's go ahead and restart Nginx. Sudo service Nginx restart. Now we can flip back over to our application, which is currently listed as unhealthy. If you recall, our health check must pass five successful checks in a row to be considered healthy. So we'll just give this a few minutes to allow the status to update now that we've created the proper route. As you can see, after waiting a few minutes here, our target has passed five successful health checks in a row and it is now considered healthy. So now the target group will serve this new target when traffic is passed to the application load balancer. So the next step is to make the change to our domain so that the traffic actually does get passed to that load balancer. So let's go to route 53 and make that change now. Within route 53, we're gonna open up our aws-rails.com domain, and we'll go ahead and click the checkbox next to the A record and click edit. Here in the value slash route section, we're going to click the dropdown. We're gonna look for alias to application or classic load balancer. Once we select that, we can go ahead and select our region. Here in our case, the region is US East one. Now we can select our load balancer. Once our load balancer is selected, we can click save changes. I just want to interrupt for one second and see if you're finding value. Please subscribe below, hit the like button, turn on the bell notification for, for future notifications of, of content like this. And if you are, we have a limited time offer. Our coworker here, Bear, will perform one trick per subscriber. Yes. Down. Yes. Roll over. Good boy! You're the goodest boy! Good boy! Down. Down. Oh my gosh!
We're going viral, bear. If we flip over to our AWS Rails application and reload, this should now be functional, but serving from our new load balancer and passing that traffic on to our EC2 instance or our healthy registered target. Here you can see we can prepend our domain with HTTPS to allow for secure traffic to our domain now that our traffic is hitting our application load balancer, which has an SSL certificate attached to it via AWS Certificate Manager. You also have the option to hit HTTP but we'd rather just force SSL traffic. So let's go ahead and take care of that really quickly in the application itself. In the AWS Rails application, we're just gonna open up our config environments production.rb. We're gonna search for force here and we can uncomment the line config.force underscore SSL equals true. This way, whether somebody navigates to our site with or without HTTPS, they will automatically be forced to the secure SSL. One last change we need to make at the bottom we want to update our default URL options to reflect our new secure by default website. Let's go ahead and update that to HTTPS and save. This way, whenever we send out emails, they will have the secure link instead of the typical HTTP. While this wouldn't break our application if we forgot to make this change, anytime we sent out an email with a link in it, those users would click and then have to hit a redirect before loading our application. It's a really quick process, but it will add a slight amount of time. To avoid this, we'll just correct our protocol. Next, we can break out of our server. We can quickly commit and deploy our code to force SSL, no matter how the user decides to navigate to our application. First, we will check out a branch that we're gonna call force-SSL. Then we will add, get add dot, our new code, which is just an update to the production environment. We can run git commit-m with the message, add force SSL. We can push. As always, this would be the point where if you were working with a team, you would create a pull request and request that your team review your code. In our case, we're just going to check out master and merge. Get checkout master, get merge, force dash SSL, get push to push our code up to GitHub. And finally, we can deploy with a bundle exec cap production deploy. Now that our application has finished deploying, let's go ahead and flip over to the browser and refresh. As you can see, we're currently on a non-secure version of our application. Once we refresh, this should get forced to the secure version. As you can see, now the lock appears and we've been successfully forced to the secure version of our application by default. It's now impossible to access our application without having an SSL certificate. You're just always gonna be redirected to the HTTPS version. As always, I hope you found this helpful. If you did find this helpful and you'd consider liking and subscribing or even sharing with somebody who you think maybe would benefit from this type of content, I would really appreciate it. And as always, I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.